You're gonna kill the love of my life. Casey! If I don't go back to what I was doing. Our line of work is quite brutal and quite ruthless. How far would you go for love? You steal truck, bring it to me. Then you make your money. Is it dangerous? Of course it's dangerous! Nicholas Holt, Felicity Jones, with Ben Kingsley and Anthony Hopkins. All this trouble, all this pain for love. Collide. Now playing. Rated PG-13. Maybe inappropriate for children under 13. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It's Thursday, and you've reached Venus Unplugged. This is your host, Lorraine Nightheart. Venus Unplugged is your virtual heartbreak hotel. So anything that has to do with the Venusian energy, the good, the bad, the ugly, the conscious, the unconscious, and most of all, our beloved psyche, which is the word name for the unconscious, and what's motivating us, what's going on here. Love is a divine principle. It's in everything. And uh, we want to explore that. We want to understand that. It's not just the achievement of love or the gaining of love, but it's the very nature. So that's part of what this is about. And when we start understanding what its nature is within ourselves and what we're unconscious to about love, uh, we can start changing, okay? So the last few weeks we've been talking about envy. Yay, envy, envy. It's real, it's true, and the denial of it is only going to get you in trouble. Envy is a principle, okay? Uh, Envy envies the goodness uh, in ourselves, in the world. So if a person is inflicted uh, with this wound of envy, where they can be a very envious person, believe me, they're in hell. Uh, And uh, hopefully they can get out of hell when they begin to, and and this is no easy task, if that's one of your tasks in life, okay? Now here a little quote from Uncle Carl, Carl Jung, okay? A man who has not passed through the inferno of his passions has never overcome them. Whenever we give up, leave behind, or forget too much, there is always the danger that the things we have neglected will return with added force. So that's what happens with denial. That's what happens when it's like, no, 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 I don't feel that. Remember, feelings are always real. Emotions, they're the reactions to the feeling. That's the charge around the feeling. But the feeling is the feeling. We may misinterpret its its meaning, but the feeling is what we value, right? So whether we've talked about, we've used the back uh, story of Cinderella and her sisters, but it's also, it's the Cinderella within and the sisters within. So this is an outer story that is a teaching around uh, envy, it's also an inner story, and uh, whatever it is that's going on inside of us, that's what's informing the world, not the other way around. And boy, oh boy, has this world been pretty, pretty tense, uh, a lot of deep breathing, a lot of like realizing, okay, what's my intention in this, because people are just snapping and uh, being nasty just because, you know, and if you could just in that second rather than jump, if you could take a little breath before you react and just, just they're, they're mean-spirited because they're so miserable, okay? I know that's hard to do when somebody throws, you know, evil in your face, okay? But, you know, the intention is one of the most powerful forces there is. What we mean when we do a thing always determines the outcome. That's the law that creates the world. So if someone is, is, has an ill intention, they're filled with envy, they want to, they, and once again, for those who are just tuning in today, you can listen to the other podcasts and what that envy is all about. Envy, when a person feels envy, okay, They do not feel the connection to goodness, whatever that goodness might be, okay? Uh, The goodness in life, uh, the loving mother, the father, um, whatever, right? They they can't have that. 
So they project onto a person who they see as has everything. Uh, and we could see the ridiculousness of that because if we just look at the story of Cinderella's evil sisters envying her for what? She was a schnook. I mean, she's cleaning and cooking and doing all this stuff, but she did it with a good heart. She did it lovingly. She did it because it was her task. She didn't bitch and moan. She just did it. And uh, that just annoyed them even more because it was like, wow, if she, could, if she can do this, okay, take on our projection and she still is connected to good, that just aggravated them the most, okay? So as I explained last week, we can have envy towards a situation or a person. We can have the fear of envy, and I've seen this destroy more create more creative potential. I think that's why we have such mediocrity uh, in, in the world in, in beauty is because very often creative people really, they don't know what it is, uh, but they're unconsciously protecting themselves from being envied. Well, you're going to be envied anyway. So you might as well go do what you've got to go do because that's your destiny and at the end of your life. When the Lords of Karma say, so, how'd you do? We gave you these gifts. And you say, well, you know, I really didn't get around to it because I was afraid of envy. Not cool. Not cool. See, we have a right to our connection to goodness and to express it. The thing that brings, uh, you know, it's, it's moral. We have a moral and ethical obligation to fulfill our gifts and our talents. Everyone has them. Not to the same degree, but that's part of what happens with, with the person who's filled with envy. They see that person can only, can't, can only do that and they don't have that connection, but they get so focused on the other person, they don't realize they bypass their own talents and their own ability. That's, that's part of our, our journey in this life, is to start to understand what it is. What's the divine plan? You know, some people can make the perfect muffin. You know, that would be a disaster for me. Nobody would want my muffins. I could cook other things, but I can't cook that. So isn't that grand? So then I have to go buy muffins or uh, have somebody else's and enjoy their goodness, what they're creating, all right? Now, how do we protect? Protection is not denial. I hear that all the time. Oh, well, that's negative. No, it's not. It's the opposite. It's not negative. It's not a moral judgment if you see, uh, you know, that there's a fly in the soup. It's just looking at it and going like, wow, hmm, look at that. Didn't see that before. Because this, what, what we wind up bringing up more envy upon ourselves unconsciously by saying, well, I only want to look at the good. I only want the good. I only want the good. Well, where do you think its opposite's going to go? It's not leaving you. It's going to stay and act itself out in some other strange way. So you don't have to dwell on the negative or evil, but you do, it, it exists. And envy is the most powerful force because people deny it, may believe that it's not there, and then it can get in, it can really work. But if you name it, you know, it's like we've got to name the, the, the little uh, demon that's trying to overcome us, okay? And that's not a literal demon, don't get worried about that, it's a psychic one. Same difference, though. Uh, we have to acknowledge it. It's like, wow, I actually, I didn't write today because I feared envy. Now, what's interesting, and I haven't seen this written anywhere, but in my uh, practice, I see it. People can have self-envy. One side of them can be envious of the other side of them, which is kind of trippy. And when they examine it, and they realize there was something within them, that was stopping them from just the sheer joy and play. I mean, it can be in the simplest way where, where you really need to relax. You need to be still, watch the birds, you know, watch the sunset, 
you know. Uh, and people can't give it to themselves. Oh, no, no, I got to work. I got to work. I got to do this. Why? The body needs rest. It's ne- it needs play. It needs joy. It needs to feel connected to the goodness. Go to a museum. Look at beauty. Go window shopping. Give yourself the beauty, but people will fear that. Or they'll go the opposite when they have, when there's too much envy and they, and they just want everything, 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 everything. Uh, for what? Who the hell can clean it and take care of it all? But the more they get, the more they devour, uh, but they still can't feel that connection to envy. Same way, a lot of times people with food have this issue too. It's like they can't, that's a different, that's more like gluttony, but it's like they, they eat all the food, but they can't get the goodness from the food, which is what they want. I want to know that this nourished me, okay? I want this ambrosia of life to bring in. I want the goodness of mother's milk and the kindness of that. And people gobble it up and don't feel the goodness, and then they want more. And gobble up don't feel the goodness, and they want more. So underlying that, you know, is this feeling of envy. My throat's going. I must be talking the truth. Look at that. It's getting me. So that's what we we want to start looking at. We want to start seeing it. We want to start saying, okay, this is what has befallen me. Last week I gave you that little hint uh, that my Jungian mentor gave me, which was envy, rage, spoil. If we wake up in the morning and we're in a really bad mood uh, and feeling that attacking voice, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Just ask yourself, did you get hit with envy in the last 24 hours? And your mind will immediately go to what happened. Psyche took it in. Your soul took it in. Processed it in the middle of the night. And then it winds up attacking you. Because when it goes unedited, not looked at, denied, it's gone in. So it's envy, rage, spoil. You'll feel the envy. You'll be filled with rage. You will do something during the day to spoil it for yourself. Like not get the work done or an important phone call you want to do or, or spill coffee on your, your report or your favorite outfit. So this is a presence in the world. You're, you're not creating it. Nobody is creating it. We're responding to it. And either way, whether you're the envy or the envying, it's devastating to be the victim of that and also to feel that. So how do we protect? We don't protect by denial. That's not protection. That's actually contributing because then it could go on and on and on and we never know uh, what that was. People become very frightened when you name something. You're not judging it by naming it. You're naming it. Okay, and, and, and through the naming of it, you can set yourself free. Because then once you know the name of it, you know its nature. Once you start to understand its nature, you can then, you can grow. You can become whole. You can recognize, oh my God, I'm not giving myself the good or I won't, or I won't go to the ball or I, uh, because I'm fearing envy. Or that was that person's intention to disconnect you from the, from the good object, whatever that good object may be. And we think we're protecting when we feed envy, which means I see people when they're really, really over generous. That's dangerous, man. I mean, generosity is first in my books. I love it. I love to give, but the goodness of it can provoke envy. And then you don't know what what happened. So if you're over, over generous with somebody or or a situation, check that. Are you playing Cinderella? You know, the suffering servant and getting nothing? Well, I got news. Not only are you feeding envy, but then you're provoking envy within yourself. Once we begin to understand what that is about, what that? What is that feeling? We see it in love. There's love in the world, but not for me. That's not true. 
is you could just say to yourself, why am I, why am I believing that? Do I envy those who have love? If so, so be it. Admit it. And then you're free. Because then you can say, then you can make a choice. I can have love. And these are the things that I'm going to do to achieve that. And more important than having love is being love. I can, I can love. I can give. And in the giving, we can have, too. There, we are going to, and I'm going to talk about this again and again and again. Because, and also what's going to be happening in the next, um, actually, 16 years, 17 years. We're going to see a lot of this. We're going to see it's, it's, it's head, it, it's always been. It's always been. This is something that is, is part of the opposites of life, okay? But we're going to see a lot of things that are motivated by envy. And we don't call it that because we're modern. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Envy is is uh, living well and very, very strong, and we need to start understanding what it's about. We're not going to rid the world of it, but we can start to understand it, okay? There's this exhaustive book. It's on Envy, A Theory of Social Behavior by Helmut Schroek, S-C-H-O-E-C-K. For those that want to really dive into um, also, the social conditions of, the, of, of envying, it's very, very interesting. Um, and it's there, you know, the, the, the envious man is it's a lonely person, so wounded. You're looking at something and you can't take in the feeling of goodness. Or you see, um, people can envy children. They're playing. They're just playing. That's what they're supposed to do, which is tremendous hard work, what they're developing, what, what is happening in them. And it's like, oh, look at kids. They can just play. They're supposed to. That's their PhD. We, we could take a, a hint from that and go back to the attitude. You know, stress and suffering is not maturity. Just because it's hard, that doesn't make it good. People have that one all confused, too. We need to, you know, I think the, the best, if we could live it, is eight hours of work, eight hours of play, and eight hours of sleep. Now, that would be amazing if we could do that. Uh, but, you know, begin to recognize, and I want to start looking at what is motivating. And so often, in love, in the love condition, it can be momentarily. It doesn't mean, you know, uh, all the time. But somebody can be motivated by envy. You know, you go to the beloved and, and something really terrific happens. Or you want to do something terrific. And they're going, nah, I don't want to do that. And then you feel deflated. Like, oh, why? Oh, that's not, that's not fun. I don't want to do that. You should know me. I don't like that. They're spoiling it. You know what? Get up and go anyway. You don't disconnect yourself from the good because somebody else wants to spoil it. Understand your value system and what is good and creative and wholesome and feeds you is the right thing for you. It's different for somebody else. But if someone tries to disconnect you from that, they because it's spoiling. See, there's a difference between creative criticism where somebody goes like, you know, that's an interesting concept or idea. If I were doing that, I would, I would tweak it a little bit this way or that. Or, wow, I mean, that's like so far beyond me. I'm clueless with what that's about. But somebody who just goes like, nah, that's no good. Or, you know, the world needs another writer. Forget it. No, you don't. That's spoiling. Wake up to that. You're going to walk away deflated. You were filled with this potential goodness uh, of, of an idea, of a possibility, of something that was true to your being. Your soul, psyche, gives you this insight. And then we go and tell an envious person, and it's gone. It's, you know, people, you, you, when something fantastic happens to you, 
um, sometimes it's very hard to find somebody who can contain your goodness and your happiness and not feel envious. And then there's this concept of it's cool to be envied. I think not. That is really not a good idea. Because that's a person who's filled with hubris, like they can't be touched by the gods. That's the worst sin of them all, hubris, H-U-B-R-I-S, okay? Hubris. Because we're evoking the envy of the gods. Not cool. When somebody's like, I want to I wanna be envied, it's cool to be envied. All right, that, that, may, you know, that may look good, but it's not good. Because eventually, envy will destroy you. So we need to keep on that middle ground. We need to know that it exists. You know, try not to evoke it because it's a deadly, deadly energy. Why would you want somebody to suffer envy? If you had a glimpse of the suffering it causes, you want that? You think that's a good thing? I don't. I think it's dangerous. And eventually, the thing that you're provoking in others will take you down. When people are gloating and like, I'm so cool and I'm so this and I'm so rich, or I'm so whatever it is, eventually envy will undo you. Because you're evoking it in people. So part of the psychic protection of this, what, what protects us from this force that is in this, on this planet, okay? Gratitude, to be humbly grateful for the good that is in your life, to be humbly, to not deny your goodness or your talent or your ability and be able to say, well, you know, it's possible. Maybe I, um, I, I can be an Olympic swimmer or maybe I am uh, the power of kindness. You know, that I can truly affect people with my kindness. That, wow, I don't see any possibility right now, but there is love in the world. And I will love again, because I want to be the very love that I want. You know that list everybody likes to write? Well, be everything on that list. That will keep you busy. Become that. Become that connection. So by, by recognizing that there's good in the world, by uh, being able to, to feel that, and by good, it's that energy. It's that co-creative energy. You know, there's a question of, you know, is the world, uh, is the universe benevolent or malevolent? Guess who believes what? Okay. People who feel that connection to the goodness, no, no. It's the, no, the world is, the universe is benevolent. It's, it's the loving mother, father. It's the forces. Look at everything that we're given. Right? But people who feel it's benevolent, I mean, can, can feel this terrible, terrible feeling. They don't have a connection. So when we humbly recognize uh, our, our talents, and, and humble do, doesn't mean that you, you know, you're, you're inferior. Humble is just, wow, man, this is so, I mean, it's like you take, see the universe or you, see, you just see the stars and it's wow. So it has you realize that we're just human beings, but look at this magnificence that we're connected to, okay? And then the gratitude that you're deeply and profoundly grateful for what you have what you can achieve, what your talents are, you don't deny it. You're not saving yourself. You're denying your karmic responsibilities to become whole. And envy is going to envy you anyway because it's not logical. See, that happen all the time when I'm doing readings. People go like, me? I don't have anything. I said, well, it's not a matter of what you have. It's not logical. And so the gratitude that that we can have, the humble gratitude that we are connected to this, this universe, that there is great good in the world, uh, that we want to be part of it, but we also know that the opposite exists, and uh, so we don't deny it because that makes it stronger. 
but humbly, humbly realizing, I can have this, I can have that connection. Or it's still an American part of the American spirit is that we do believe we're, you know, we're like the last of the cowboys and girls, uh, is that we can, we can achieve. That's very enviable. A lot of other countries, you, you don't have a chance. Whatever you're born into, man, that's it. We still have that precious possibility in this country to grow, to become, to overcome. That's enviable. Many, many countries don't have that. So we need to live that and to have that feeling. And with the, with the sense of, of gratitude, that's powerful. People who are inflated, they think they are the good. That's a huge difference. That's differentiation, right? You are not the good. You're not the goddess. You're not God. Okay, but you participate, you can experience, you can touch that feeling in your humanity, just the same way you can touch the not good. You can touch evil by uh, being motivated. I mean, we see it in literature all the time. Uh, Mozart and, you know, how he was so, so envied because he was just born with this ability that was... His gift. People are born with gifts, but we all have gifts. They're not the same. And if we're busy cultivating those gifts and abilities, no matter how small or no matter how great they may be, and having that gratitude, just the gratitude that you, you woke up this morning. You had the whole day to change your life to help others, to maybe yesterday you felt dejected and you couldn't do anything about it or something terrible happened, okay? But today, you can begin to look at that. You can begin to correct that. If it can't be corrected at this moment, you can hold your connection with gratitude that you do have the strength and the ability to overcome this. You may not be able to change outer circumstances, but nobody, but nobody but yourself can destroy you internally. And that's where the power is. Psyche, soul, that's where the love is. Feeling it. And not that bliss ninny love, where everything is so good. And it, no, that, that just provokes, that's annoying. Real, here, on earth. Because this is our planet. This is what we've got. You know, the act of becoming human takes us our whole life. The American Indians say, you know, we're born two-legged. But it's an act of humanity that, that makes us human. This is this journey upon this earth, this magnificent globe that we are all part of. And so when the heartbreak comes, whatever that might be, and we can begin to say, all right, I lost. Nobody likes to lose. Okay. Or you got tricked. Somebody devalues you, All right? And I see this a lot in love relationships. And one party doesn't catch on the motivation of the other party. And the motivation is to spoil it so they don't feel the connection to the good. All right, we need, it's your job in your life to stay connected to that and not to shove it in people's face because that just provokes all sorts of nonsense, okay? Or like I said, the, I do not, can't even comprehend why somebody would want to be envied because why would you want that energy to come at you and why would you want other people to feel envy? So, pay. so uh like me on Facebook, call for an appointment, 212-757-8914. Uh, go to Blog Talk Radio, down, uh, download uh, the episodes, and uh, we will continue. And that's what Heartbreak Hotel is about. 
It's about learning to overcome and experience it all and still love no matter what. Till next week, I got to bounce. Bye. Till next week, I got to bounce. Bye. Till next week.